I am not exaggerating when I say microdosing has been the best thing to ever happen to me in a very long time. I'm someone that deals with anxiety and depression ongoing, and it's something where I've come across different things that certainly help, but for the most part, I feel like I'm in this marathon of white knuckling it, doing whatever I can to not resort to checking out in my own way, checking out with food, checking out with alcohol, checking out with online shopping, checking out with some new rabbit hole to go down. In this video, I'm going to share with you my misconception about microdosing, my own mental health that led me to try microdosing, and how it's made a profound shift in my life. If you're new here, my name's Rachel. Each week I put together content on the things that are legit helping me. And clearly this is one of those things. So I'm so excited to share it with you. And because this is a sensitive topic, I do have some disclaimers to get into first before we get started. Okay, now that we have the disclaimers out of the way, I want to share with you my misconceptions about microdosing. So if you don't know about microdosing, what I'm referring to is the active ingredient of magic mushrooms, as they're called, called psilocybin. And when microdosing, you're taking a tenth of a serving size of these hallucinogenic mushrooms. So it's a very small dose. This has been studied over decades. It's really resurfaced most recently as over time it did become taboo for quite some time and in many places it is still illegal. But I myself would often group mushrooms with marijuana and that we all have this kind of perception of what marijuana is. I have nothing against it, but my own experience with marijuana had been horrible and I've just decided it is not for me. Anything with the benefits of marijuana, I'm like, cannot do it. No, <laughs> no bueno. It does not work with my chemistry and the experiences that, I, that I've had. So I would group mushrooms with that. And I kind of think of it like when you identify with car brands, you may have the opportunity to buy a brand new BMW. But if you're not a BMW person, despite how wonderful the vehicle is, you may not be as jazzed about it as you are to relate to a vehicle, like even a Nissan, you may vibe more so with the Nissan brand with a BMW. And although objectively you could say a BMW is better, you would probably, you may rather have the Nissan. Horrible example, but you can see that perception really is reality and perception drives us and motivates us to what we're doing. So when I started learning about this research with the benefits of psilocybin and these hallucinogenic mushrooms for depression and anxiety, I automatically thought it's not for me. I don't do that. It's not for me. It wasn't until I started hearing the author, Michael Pollan, who wrote a book I read years ago called The Botany of Desire. Um, the Botany of Desire is about four plants that have just revolutionized mankind, potatoes, marijuana, apples, and tulips. And it's a really interesting read that makes you feel like a brainiac when you read it. But um, I, I'm very fond of this author. So he came out with this book about psychedelics called Change Your Mind or something like that. I got on audiobook. I did not listen to the whole thing, but I share that with you because it was, it planted a seed in me, if you will, that I was okay, open to the possibility. If Michael Pollan, an author I respect so much, is touting all the benefits, maybe there's something to this. And I went through some phases where I would watch Andrew, Andrew Huberman talk about it. I would watch different videos about the benefits. But it's such a different, it, there's a big difference between hearing research and learning from somebody, somebody else's experience that you can relate to. So that's really what I'm getting at in this video is to share a testimonial, if you will, from somebody I may, you know, we may have a lot in common and you may see yourself in me and I'm just, I'm just sharing with you my experience. And no way am I encouraging anyone to do this. I'm just sharing a story here. So that was my misconception. Now let me just quickly tell you about my own mental health. I am somebody for a long time who has dealt with anxiety and depression. 
And the way I explain my anxiety is this sense that there's just this impending doom. Something bad is going to happen. And in some ways, I think that there's relief if something bad does happen <laughs> because it's like, okay, the anxiety is over. Then with my depression, I get into this space of I could care less, I'm just apathetic. And often the way that shows up is I don't want to do anything. I don't take much enjoyment from anything. I don't take care of myself. And I'm just in a very low place. That is just the most simple way I'm going to explain it. I'm not going to go into it. We don't want, it's like, that's not the purpose of this video. In my anxiety and depression, I've often looked at ways to just check out, just escape myself. And I've been on, you know, I've been through therapy, many years of therapy. I've learned all sorts of coping skills. I've been on medication. All those things help to an extent. But there's still that impending doom that comes. There's still that dark cloud that follows me. Sometimes it's darker than others, that cloud I'm talking about. Sometimes it's worse than other times. But it's always there. And it's exhausting trying to run away from those things and trying to keep it at bay. It just feels like this marathon of white knuckling it. All right. So now, you know, my misconception about psilocybin, my mental health in a nutshell, we're not going to go there. Okay. <laughs> my mental health in a nutshell. And then let's just get into my experience, how I experienced microdosing. So I was actually in Denver, Colorado, where mushroom dispensaries are available and legal for a bachelorette party. And there was a girlfriend there who had gotten these chocolates, you know, that you could microdose with. Um, and long story short, had such a great time, had so many laughs, felt absolute joy. I did not feel high. Um, one of my friends also told me if you do start to feel a little bit much, like if you do start to feel high, no, you can, you can control it. Like you can adjust. And there was a moment where things were really starting to slow down and it reminded me of how I felt when I had had pot in the past. And I remembered what she said. And it was like, I was able to stay on track. But the, here's the big thing that happened. The following days, like two or three days, I felt like a joyousness within me, like a childhood joy where there's all these possibilities, there's excitement and that cloud, that anxiety, the kind of impulse, compulse, I don't know the difference between those two words, <laughs> but the compulsions I would have like to just like eat my feelings or to just check out in some way that was gone. I just felt so settled for days. And I thought this this is my ticket. This is it for me. Now, not having like a way to get this, not living in an area where it's legal, just kind of, you know, well, that was great. <laughs> and I found myself back in Denver and found myself by that point, better understanding the protocol that doctors will actually put people on. So in the States where it's legal for those that want to seek this therapy, they can see a doctor that will monitor them and prescribe them microdosing, not every day, but even once every three days, they have this way of managing it. And it's just a way to manage that depression and anxiety. And when I was spending an extended period of time in Denver, I mimicked that approach and that anxiety and depression, it was like I'd never had it. Not to mention, I just felt more light and more grounded and just that sense of optimism. It's the best analogy I have is it makes me feel the way I feel the day before a vacation where, you know, everything's going to be fine. We have something to be excited about. I have everything wrapped up and there's just all these possibilities. I'm convinced that given greater awareness of these benefits, greater adoption from everyday people, I see greater potential that this will be widely available. If this is something that you're looking to explore in your area and you can access it, I, I am going to link some videos for you um, to, that have helped me. One thing you want to be aware of, and a theme that I've come across, is a lot of times people will promote buying these things through Instagram account. Come to find out that is a common scam. Whatever you do, do not fall for that. Of course, you always want to be careful. 
and that's why it's best to access it somewhere where it's legal. If you can see a doctor and be put on a protocol. Again, these are things I'm not, you know, equipped to talk through. I just want to share with you what has just, again, been probably the best thing to happen to me in a very long time. I'm somebody that's always had this kind of cloud and darkness within me. And I've done so much work for me to know that this is available and how profound it's been for me. It is my obligation to share it with you. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see you next time.